Under the Bridge, the podcast. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Under the Bridge, the podcast. Thanks for joining us for another episode. My name is Nelson Latif. I'm here with the one and only, the golden boy of Lead Bridge, Fog Boy. How you doing, my guy? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for coming through, man. We appreciate it. Um, let's just get it cracking, right? <laughs> yeah, and let's dive straight into it. Uh, can you tell us about your background, uh, how you got into music? Well, I'm Canadian, born and raised, Bethlehem, Alberta. Um, but if you want to get deep, I guess on my mom's side, she's uh, Swedish, Ukrainian, French, Italian. And then my dad is actually, he's Brazilian. Wow. Yeah, so we're out of time. <laughs> hey, another samba in there, you know, but uh, his side, his father is from Portugal. And then my, with his mother, my grandmother is from uh, South Sudan, I believe. Wow, wow, that's so deep, man. Hey, geez, um, you know, first time I heard your music, uh, I think it was the, ba- the Space Beam track. And I said, wow. Uh, coming out of Leadbridge, these brothers got so <laughs> yeah, so uh, how would you how would you uh, categorize your music? Uh, what is your genre? I would say it depends on what vibe I'm feeling at the time. Currently, I've been releasing pop music for the past couple of years, um, but you know, in the past, I've done a little bit of hip hop, a little bit of R and B. You know, I'd love to do everything. You know, it just depends on the vibe and what I feel. I want to put out when I feel people want to hear, to be honest. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's like, um, cause I know it's important for some artists, uh, not to feel boxed into a particular genre, uh, because that could, um, sort of eliminate the opportunity to, uh, work with other artists from different musical backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, do you feel the same way? Um, not, not really. I feel like if you want to do it, just do it. There's no such thing as boxes really like. I come from the countryside, the prairies, you know, country music is really big here, but it wasn't kind of what I was raised on, but I still recognize that's huge. So, I, and I'm from here, you know, so I would love to be, you know, involved with a country project. So at what time, you know what I mean? Like it depends on the vibe and, you know, a couple months, I'll just go country mode, you know, a couple months. I'll... Yes. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Versatility. Yeah. Um, you had a busy month in April. Yeah, uh, I see you did a couple of shows. So, uh, what's your favorite song to perform, and what's your favorite show you've performed at in April? Ah, uh, shout out to like CKXU really for helping me out there with um, getting me in the university for one of their lunchbox concert series. That was really fun. That whole crowd of just students is like, you know, it's you know my friends. You know, I'd I'd love to be there more often. And CKXU also invited me back to the uh, theoretically brewing company. Wow, did a, my first bar show, which is like awesome. That was still a fun vibe. And yeah, I was at that one. Though. So yeah, yeah, that was that was a dope. It's a nice little intimate vibe. Mm-hmm. And and then yeah, there's a lot of uh, my first show was an sh- artist showcase that I did, which was good to get some practice and feel it out and meet new people. And yeah, it's been busy the past couple months. Yes, so yes, so um, well, what do you hope people take away from your music? Honestly, I just hope they think it sounds good and they want to listen to it and have fun with it in the background. You know what I mean? I think my music is not, although my lyrics, if you ask me about my lyrics, I'll explain them to you, but I don't think my music's the deepest music. I just think it's, I want to make catchy music that people can listen to and have fun to and just put on and do whatever they want to do with their day. You know what I mean? And I had a muscle, you make, you made catchy music, right? You do, do, man, and I'm, I'm a fan for real. Uh, how, how was your music evolved? Was there a particular style you started up with before you switched into pop and just experimenting with different kind of music? Yeah. Well, when back in 2016, when like that whole SoundCloud rap era was just beginning and all those rappers were just becoming a thing. It yep. was just, yep. in high school, we were in grade 11 and it was just like cool and it was accessible. But, like anyone could kind of hop on SoundCloud and make music. Yep. So we just did it for fun, you know, it's just, you know. It was kind of satire at the time, but then we made a couple of tracks that people, um, they, they liked, like, you know, they liked the tracks like CC and this one track called Earl's Girls. Well, I'm going to shake those out. <laughs> those are deep cuts. Those are on SoundCloud. Hopefully they could stay on there forever, but eventually got to a point where 
I wanted to keep making music, but I didn't believe I could be authentic personally within that uh, area. So I just kind of went on my own and decided to like make pop music because growing up pop and rock and um, that was also a huge part of my life alongside hip hop. Yeah. So I wanted to explore that side as well. That is that is so um, that's very smart of you actually to sort of find you, to find yourself uh, at any stage and you know connect to your roots essentially you know uh, what's your biggest musical influence? Influence to me is different than like inspiration. Yes, yeah, sort of like influence at it, I would say like artists that influence how I want to be as an artist. I would say like maybe Dre. Right. Yeah, Justin Bieber, <laughs> uh, just, you know, like, Wham was a good influence there. Um, like, growing up, I listened to a lot of Eminem. Oh, oh, oh let, me, let, me, let me put it this way, right? If you had the opportunity to work with any artist in the world, what would that be? On well, sports. <laughs> realistically, I would love to work with Drake or Justin Bieber or The Weeknd. Um, or any Canadian artist, really. Um, I would love to listen to that. Speaking of any Canadian artist, right? Um, you know, I follow the Canada, uh, the Kyrie Sand, mm -hmm. the big, I'm heavy with those guys, your Kiwis, Malaika, Eli, I'm sure you know those guys, right? Yeah. Um, and I would personally like you guys to, you know, sort of have uh, more collaborations with them to sort of be the uh, build a bridge between Le Bridge and Calgary. I yeah. think we can create a wave coming out of Alberta. True. Yeah. Collaborations. Um, what do you see a musical uh, journey in five years? Hopefully still going, <laughs> to be honest, you know, and maybe my full-time job at that point, um, more music videos, more shows around, you know, the province and the country maybe. Um, yeah, more experience, and you know more people to help me out and you know uh, a more refined process and you know, just... no i know it's gonna keep going for sure man you've got what it takes i mean the, we've got infrastructure in place in lead breach and that, you know um the reason why i ask you that also is that um, i wanted to know if you have any plans to venture into other career path you know along with your musical journey like a movie star oh. And <laughs> what though? Uh, because I feel like we can do it all for real. Uh, um, what do you think? I would love to be in movies. Like another big side of my thing is film. I love to write and direct, and acting is my dream. To be honest, um, besides being a professional footballer, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Being a professional footballer. Please tell me about that. I will go back to the. Uh, uh, you know, venturing into other stuff. I love soccer. Yeah, yeah. the name Puck Boy. Yeah. Please elaborate, man. <laughs> it's such a weird story, man. I swear, one time um, when we were playing soccer, we were out for a team lunch, and there was this whole, my favorite team's Manchester. Oh, my goodness. Jeez, I'm passing the fan. This what it is. It is what it is. But, um, there was this player coming back to United, and his name was Paul Pogba. Yep. And there was this huge uh, promotional run for him with hashtags yes. like Pog back, Pog boom, Pog dance, Pog, all this. And then I looked at my buddy, I'm like, should I change my name to Pog boy as a joke on Instagram? But like, yes, my at. And then he's like, yeah, do it. So I did. And then I just never changed it back. <laughs> I, I like it. That's, that's, that's unique, man. And now... Uh, and that's like you thinking from a global perspective, right? Yeah. Because we have a lot of cats out here that is like more into, you know, keeping it local and it has to be very um, relatable with the people in that bridge. Yeah. Uh, um, salute, man. Salute. Yeah. Um, I see the full babe video is up. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> What's the idea and concept behind that video? Well... There's, it's actually a deep song. Like it's a short little song, but the story behind it is actually pretty extensive. Like, I was just going about my day, and then this um, local producer, this kind of this dude I know actually just from school and stuff, he sent me a couple. His name's Spicy. Okay, and he sent me a couple beats, and he said, "Yo, check these out." And I liked one of them, and that was the Fall Bay beat. And I was like, "Yo, I really like this one." Actually, he's like, "Oh, um, my friend's already on that, but I don't think he's gonna use it." And his friend was named Kendrick. Okay. 
Oh, Kendrick, seven and seven years. Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah, Romeo Savage. Oh, yeah. Or Kendrick, yeah. He, that's, his old name was Romeo Savage. Oh, <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, I hit him up at the time. That's what his name was. And then um, he said, yo, I'm not going to use it, um, but if you want it, you can have the course. And at the time, he had the course action. Oh, wow. Uh, I can't remember all the pictures that you took up on my phone, babe. Yeah. That wasn't me. That was his course. But I, he sent me the his version of it, and I really liked it. I'm like, yeah, a hard song. Like, you know, I'm going to use it. They said no. So I was like, can I have it? I will totally credit you for writing it, like, 100%. I just want to, because I had an idea. You know, it inspired me to turn it into, like, a story track of, I can't remember the pictures on my phone. Now I'm waking up, you know. It's just, I can't remember what the, your pretty little face would have looked like, and then. If I could remember, and at the end of the song, it's like, if I could just remember all those pics on the phone, I would let you come sit right here up on my throne. So it was just like an, a story song, you know, like a, an A to Z kind of song with, and I just really wanted to make that happen. And then when I made the song on my version after he said I could do it, I instantly pictured a chase scene. Oh, <laughs> It's silly, Richard, the chase. That's the first thing that came to my mind because, you know, you wake up, you don't know what happens. It's a relatable, just story. Yes, sir. It's like you having fun and then one, you know, you don't know what happened. You wake up, you got to deal with your, the repercussions. Yes, yes. Um, and then, yeah, I envisioned the chase scene and then I wanted to just make it funny and comedic and really lighthearted, kind of throw it back to the good old days of YouTube, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. A skit type thing, you know? And a lot of that is missing to this music, right? The, the the storytelling, the you know, like you 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 can go extensively to how the music come about and stuff like that. Which I'm with that. Salute, man. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Uh, but I've got to ask you this though, All right? Think carefully with way you answer. Uh, is the song "Phone Babe" dedicated to a particular babe, or there are many babes? <laughs> no, no, it's not not a particular babe, but none of my music. Everyone always thinks it's about them or someone else. Or no. that's what I always think about your music. <laughs> I, know. I think it's inspiration. It's like I have a toy box of like life events that I've been through or other people have been through. Yes, so, and then when I want to create a vibe, I will pull out of that and it's like a puzzle. I'll take a puzzle from piece from here, piece from there, piece from that, put it all together and create a vibe. You know, sometimes. You gotta, when it's like writing, you know, storytelling, you know, some of my songs, most of my song, actually all of my songs yes, sir. are lyrics that I believe in and that I believe I feel. Um, but regarding it being about a particular person, I feel like, no, it's just the feeling. That feeling is a universal feeling that we all feel. Yes, sir. Like being sad. We all feel being sad. We all feel being happy. We all go through breakups. We all go through you know, not getting along with someone. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. So, no, not a particular person. <laughs> but maybe, I guess, it, I don't know. I, <laughs> it's it's inspiration. It's storytelling, you know what I mean? No, that's that's deep. Thank you for sharing, man. That's deep, that's deep. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects or, or shows in the world you would like to share with us, your fans and people of God? Um, I, I got, you know, phone babes done now. You know, I'm still working on promoting that. Um, but regarding the summer, I have a couple songs that I think are, are summer anthems that could be ready for release. I'm just, I need to plan it a little bit better. But my next big project is this track called Lunch. Okay. And that's going to be like my next big thing that I really want to put a lot of time into. Probably getting into the fall, stuff like that. But that's what I'm going to focus on next is Lunch. And as for shows, nothing yet, but you know, I'm sure stuff will come up and you know, I'm I'm ready to perform. I've been performing. I'm getting the vibes slowly but surely. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm hoping uh, that I like your performances, right? Your short performances. And I'm hoping you do get a chance to perform at the July uh, Canada Day. Mm. Uh, I'd love to see you to just do your thing because you, you've got what it takes me as a real rock show bro. Um, you were born and raised in Lidbridge, right? Yes. Uh, what is that one thing that you wish people outside of Lidbridge? should know about the city that you are personally proud of there's a it's a growing community i think personally i'm proud of the growth that this community has seen like the past 21 years of my life because that's all i know right so like 
it, even, you know, being a kid and not having stuff to do in the city, like, you know, cool stores to go buy things at or like places to hang out with friends or like, you know, stuff like that. Over the years, that's slowly been being built up for the kids younger than me now. So they'll have, you know, skate parks and like yeah. places to play sports and stuff. Um, that's what I'm proud of. Is it. It's a growing community with lots of good local businesses that make good product and good food and great service. And I think people don't know that there's lots of uh, passion, you know, in this town. If you look, if you know where to look, you know what I mean? Yes, so yeah. that's true. That's true. Um, that's, that's really, uh, that's, that's so deep the way you put it because I get that as well. There's, a, there's this sort of a misconception yeah. about the city. Uh, a lot of people only realize now until they come in here like, wow, really? And that's why we need guys like you to put in, to put in work. <laughs> yeah, just flood, you know, flood out better, flood Canada with the, uh, the, the, there's a wave coming out of that bridge. Yeah. And that's something I, I want to be proud of. Um, what has been your biggest challenges as an artist here in that bridge? In a way. Um, just having pe people to work with, you know what I mean? Like as like directors, writers, like, um, filmers, like editors, uh, uh, like audio. I list lots of people and I found that over the years, but at the beginning it was like, you know, there's not a, a big group of people. Like it's not huge, you know, you can't just look left, right, center and see like, oh yeah, there's a filmer there, filmer there. You know what I mean? You kind of have to know people or get lucky or have that right infrastructure. And that's kind of, you, you know what I think? Um, it's just my own personal opinion, right? I feel like we have a lot of talented people in the city, right? A lot of them, uh, very artistic people, people with unique talent that are doing great things, right? But I also feel like there's a there's division among, especially young artists, right, in the city. Yeah. Uh, and I know there are some artists coming together, trying to push shows together, events and stuff like that to showcase uh, young talents in the city. Um, but your opinion, do you think that's enough, really? Um, no, I mean, it's good for now, but obviously we always need more, you know. We always need more more events, more organizations, and more uni unification. Dif different uh, different curated events, too. Yes. Is it known? I need, like, different styles of events. Yes. And at the end of the day, division, for me, working, like, for example, with Phone Babe, it just happened. We just made that track. We worked out. He hit me up. God's plan, you know, just had this. And, like, I'll never force something, like, you know, I'll never advocate. It's got to be organic. Yeah, it has to be organic. And if it isn't, it's not personal. You know what I mean? It's just, like, we're, we're creators. We need to realize that, you know, you're going to make something bad, and you're going to make something that's not good, and then you're going to make something that's good, and then you make something horrible. You know what I mean? So, like, it's just the process, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And then I'm always like, maybe next time. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I just, that's what I believe in personally. Yeah, I just want to go back to the point that I made earlier when I said, um, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, we have decent amount of artists, people, you know, of all kind of uh, profession here in the city. Uh, but I think it's also got something to do with uh, people trying to keep it in their bubble. Uh, I don't know, maybe I could be wrong. Uh, which I want to ask you, uh, do you think if we can actually sort of use social media, you know, uh, to sort of, um, uh, you know, promote uh, or document uh, their work, what they do, and to, to find it easy to reach out to other artists and just connect right off? Do you think that can help in any way to sort of create a connection and collaborations that we desperately need it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like if if you're on Instagram, like what kind of phone bay, perfect example. Yeah, we DM'd on Instagram like that. So if you're on Instagram putting your stuff out there, and then someone sees your stuff and they want to work with you, then but hit them up. You know what I mean? Like hardest, I love to work with people. Like I want to do things. I want to create videos. I want to create content. You know what I mean? That's what I want to do. You need you need people. You know, you need all sorts of help in production. You know what I mean? And like, you never know. Like. Maybe working with someone might be explicitly like yes. making a track, but maybe you're like just hanging out and like making a video and like helping out with like brainstorming other ideas. You know what I mean? Like, I would say like social media is good um, because we can get ourselves out there, 
but like when you approach someone or something i don't know don't have a uh, expectation you know what i mean maybe just like be like yo let's do it if it works out if it doesn't whatever you know maybe next year <laughs> well um but a lot of people are reluctant right yes yeah. they've been they've got so many no's and and people get you know a little bit like, i don't know you like that um that that could be something or that could be the reason why people also feel like hey i've got to meet you in person first to get up you know but also the the chemistry has to be there like you know you have to get along you know like it's if before where you like go to like the creating the superficial things it's like the, the human interaction first so it's like the vibe needs to be right you need to get along you need to want to work with each other in the first place there needs to be beneficial things for both sides you know what i mean it needs to work out for both sides and if someone wants help then if you're willing to help then that's also there as well you know what i mean but people like helping so they get something out of helping someone you know what i mean so then it's beneficial for both sides and um i just feel that if it if you are reluctant just it's part of the process it's part of the process maybe it's not meant to happen yet <laughs> is that artist a local artist yeah in that bridge you would love to work with you have not reached out to yet but you would love to work with them or you just admire their work local artists there was a couple i know there was um all the acts i wanted to do a track with i tried to search uh, shout out all the shout out. <laughs> I really like um, like UK rap, and like I'm big. It's the only rap I listen live. Now, yeah, it's the only stuff I'm. Yeah, I'm a big Stump Zipper. Yes, the kind of thing. I love Afro trap and Afro beats as well. I love that whole vibe. And I really yeah. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you you heard. I don't know if you heard this track uh, by Oli and Omobab. <laughs> uh, uh, Sunshine. Yeah, I did. Nice yeah. little. That that was like yo. That was a dope one. So we need that, and that's the thing in Latvia, just like we don't have that diversity. So it's so important to have all sorts of genres like that. Like hearing them reach out into that side is like awesome, and I really like that. I really awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything you want to touch on? A lot of people need to know EP, how long coming out, where to find you on social media, and all kind of stuff. I'm at Pog Boy everywhere. Phone babe out now lunch soon and just pay attention because we got stuff coming we're rolling yes so uh, i like that <laughs> thank you uh thank you so much for once again for coming through we appreciate your time and keep going we want to see more guys like you succeed in the city and put the city on the map and uh we hope you and yeah you have all the support it takes me really in the infrastructure is right there and the sign up message stay dialed <laughs> Uh, thank you all so much for joining us for another episode. We really appreciate it. And be on the lookout for the next episode. Peace.